This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the platform that teaches Flutter and upgrade your skills as a Flutter developer. So in this video, we are going to talk about the new navigator and how to refactor your default navigator into the new navigator. However, in this video, I will not teach you on how to sync the URL of your Flutter web project because it's very, very complicated. So this is just a simple introduction on the new navigator. You can follow along this tutorial by forking this project and the link is in the description. Don't forget to start this project. So what is the difference between Navigator 2.0 to the Navigator 1.0 or the OG? Well, at a big conceptual picture, the difference is that the Navigator 2.0 is a more declarative way of doing navigation in your Flutter app, while the OG Navigator or the Navigator 1.0 uses an imperative way. But you might be asking, what is the difference between imperative programming and declarative programming? So let me explain imperative programming to you first. Here is an example. Let's say you were in a taxi and the taxi driver asks you, where do you want to go? And then you replied, uncle lah, go straight, turn left, then exit after the school. Well, this example is imperative programming. So what you have done earlier is that you are giving instructions to the taxi driver because you assume that the taxi driver have no idea where to go. So you could say that this is the how of problem solving. So the default navigator is imperative. Sorry if I paused this video, but while I was editing this video, I saw a Twitter thread that talks about whether the old or default navigator is declarative or imperative. So the thing is, there is this documentation in Flutter that talks about declarative UI. And then if you were to scroll all the way down, you could see there's examples of how it looks like in an imperative style. So this looks very similar to the default navigator. So if you have the navigator dot of context and then you either pop or push named and then you will put in a value. So this is the imperative style of a normal programming language or a framework. However, in a declarative style, you would see something like this. So it looks very like a widget. And then what you do is you just expose the widget and then you would just put in the value to the params that a widget or an element has. And it probably has a child widget. The declarative style will look something like this. Therefore, I would say the default navigator is more of an imperative style of programming and navigating in your Flutter app. So let's continue with this video. And at a novice or maybe almost all of Flutter developers, you probably have used the navigator of context.pop function or the push name function with your routes that you have created or a little bit more advanced on using the on generate routes in your material app and then you probably handle the settings name. For example, if you have a slash, and then you will return a home screen using the material page route widget. So let's see in our example project that we have using the default navigator. So I have a books app over here and it's pretty simple. So I have a bunch of books and if I were to click on a book cover, it will redirect me to a book summary and whatever it is over here. So, and then if I were to click back, it would just lead me back to the home page. So I want to show you not all of the code, but this very specific code that we have over here. So this book cover is actually an inkwell. When we tap it or on the on tap function, then what it will do is that we will push it. And I use a navigator.push function that uses the material page route in order for me to go to the specific book page that I've clicked on. If I were to click on, on this Fight Club cover, it will lead me to the Fight Club summary. However, the summary is the same and everything is the same except for the title and the author. So let's go back. So this is a very simple example of how we are using the default or the OG navigator for our simple app over here. Now I'm going to explain to you 
the opposite of imperative programming, which is, you guessed it, declarative. So let's use the same taxi example and the taxi driver asked you the same question, where do you want to go? And you probably, as a normal human being, you would reply, I want to go to the beach. Let's go to the beach, each, let's get it away. Or the location you want to go. And this is called declarative programming. This is basically the what of programming. You are saying out the destination that you want to arrive. So this is just some code that we're going to use in a new navigator. And this is how the new navigator looks like. And it actually looks like a widget, which is a very declarative way. So what we're going to do is we're going to refactor our project that we have forked into the new navigator. So the first thing first, I'm a realist. Second is I'm going to remove the navigator.push function. Now we are not going to use the OG navigator, but we're going to use the new navigator. So let's scroll all the way up. And then under my app widget, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this home page in a navigator widget. So I'm going to teach you a little secret. So if you want to wrap a widget in a list type params, what you can do is you can wrap it with a column and then you can just remove the column into the list type widget. So we have navigator and then this children is not found inside navigator. So we're going to change this children into pages. And now under these pages, it says here in the error, the element type home page can't be assigned to the list of type page dynamic. So if we were to hover over the pages parameters, you could see that it requires a specific type, which is page. So what we can do is we can make use of this widget. So let's wrap this widget with the material page. And now let's save this and you could see there is an error. So let's zoom in into the error. So the first error says that widget.pages is empty. So let's look on that. So under our navigator, inside our pages, uh, we actually have a widget. So this should be correct. However, there is this thing called widget.onPopPage is null. So what we need to do is we need to declare this onPopPage params. So under our navigator, what we're going to do is we're going to type in onPopPage. And this onPopPage Personally, I don't know exactly what on pop page does, but what it says inside the documentation is that this on pop page will be run or invoked in the current route corresponding to the page found in the page list. So if we were to redirect to a page and then we want to go back or pop, then this on pop page function will run. So there is two things that we need to declare the route and then there's this thing dynamic. So what we can do is we can just press control space and then this will give us some suggestions on the different things that we need to go pass in. So you could see that it has the route and result. So we are going to select this one with the curly brackets. So if we were to hover on pop page, she says that this callback is responsible for calling a route did pop and returning whether this pop is successful. So sometimes when you pop over a page, it does not pop off successfully. So what we can do is we can type in a if conditional statement to say that if route dot did pop and then result, we are going to return false. So what I mean by returning false is that if the route did not pop successfully, then we will return false. If it does, we don't need an else, we can just put in return true. So the on pop page requires booleans, whether it is false and true, according to the conditional that we have set. So let's save this. All right, now it works. So the next thing is that we want to use the new navigator to do our navigation. So if we were to click on a book cover, we want it to redirect us to the book page. So what we can do is we are going to use set state. So in order for us to use set state, we need to have a stateful widget. So under my app, inside the stateless widget, we are going to convert it into a stateful widget. So the thing is that why are we using stateful widget is that under the navigator, 
it controls the state of the page that we are showing. So if you were to have only one page, for example, the home page, then it will only show the home page. But then if we can control the variables that we are going to create later, then we can show the pages according to the variables that is changed according to the state that we set. So what we can do is we can create a variable that is called selected book. So this selected book is the book that we are going to click on. So we're going to just put in the type book over here. The next thing is that since the selected book is null by default, we need a function to make this selected book into the book that we are clicking on. We are going to create a function called handle book tab. And then inside these arguments, we're going to put in a book, book, book. <laughs> we're going to pass in an argument of a book object. And then what we're going to do inside this function is that we're going to use the set state function to have our selected book variable into the book that we have tapped on or selected. Let's scroll all the way down to our home page. So under our home page inside our inkwell, our on tab will actually handle which book will be displayed. So we need to pass down the handle book tab function inside our home page. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to create a field that is called value changed and then with a type book and we're going to name it on tab. So let's open the suggestion menu and let's create a constructor for the final fields. So why are we using this value changed or what is this value changed over here? So it is a type definition, meaning that it is just like a variable that helps you create certain functions that requires an argument. So the argument over here is a value with a type or representing as the T. So the function that we have created over here will have an argument or value book. So let's scroll all the way down. And then what we can do is we can just copy this on tab. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just highlight the curly brackets and let's put this arrow function. And then we're going to type in the on tab with the book value over here. So why do we need to pass in the book? Because we are passing in a function that also needs the book value in its argument, which is the handle book tab. So inside our home page over here, it will pass in the book that we tap on. So let's go back to the my app widget over here. Under our home page, we can type in on tab and then we are going to pass in the private function handle book tab. And we don't need the value and the colon. We just need the function name itself. And let's save this. So now under our handle book tab, if you were to create a print statement, that is calling the book title that we selected. And then if you were to just click on the book, you could see that it will print out the title. For example, this is the way book has printed out the this is the way book. Or if we print out this fight club book, it will print out the fight club book. All right, so it's working. So let's remove this print statement. So now since the handle book tab function is working, what we are going to do is Instead of us showing the home page, even though we are clicking on the book, what we are going to do is we are going to showcase the book page once we click on it. So what we can do is we can just type in material page and then we will type in child and then we will type in book page. So this book page requires a book parameters and we can pass in the selected book. So now let's save this and see if it works. So now the thing is, it says invalid member on null image. So that means our book page or the selected book variable is null. How do we then catch this invalid member on null image? So what we can do is we can create a conditional statement to say if the selected book is not null, then we will return the book page. If it's null, then it will just return the home page. So let's save this. All right. So if we were to click on, for example, let's click on this Dirty Harry movie poster. You could see that it returns us the Dirty Harry movie that's written by Don Siegel. So let's go back and it works. So there's one more thing that we need to do. The thing is when we go back, our selected book is actually 
not null. So what do I mean by that? I created a print statement to see whether our selected book is null. So if I were to go to enemy over here, and now if I were to pop back, you could see that when we pop, our selected book is an instance of a book. And the thing is, we don't want that inside our home page. We want the selected book in our home page to be now, just in case if there is some side effects. What we can do is we can create a set state function that sets the selected book to a null once it pops successfully. And now if we were to save this and let's put a breakpoint on our return true, let's click on this manual of minimalism and let's pop back and then let's hover over this selected book. You could see that the selected book is null. All right. We have successfully refactored our book app Flutterweb PWA kind of project into the new navigator using the navigator and material page widget using the set state. However, you might think that, wait, even though it looks like we use a declarative way, we also use some imperative way using functions to navigate using the new navigator. Well, you are right. This is because many declarative approaches, whether it is Flutter or any other programming languages, have some sort of imperative abstraction layer or imperative approaches. So what this means, if we were to use our taxi example, we are assuming that when we declare where we want to go, for example, to the beach, the taxi driver would then know which direction to go. So he probably say, okay, I need to go to straight, then turn left, then exit at the school. And this whole thinking inside his mind is actually an imperative way. So in summary, we learned what the difference between the imperative and declarative programming using the taxi example of answering the taxi driver question, where do you want to go? If you were to answer the location, that means you're doing the declarative programming way. While if you were to instruct the taxi driver where to go, then it is the imperative way. And also we learned how to navigate your Flutter app using the widgets navigator and pages or material pages using set state. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below, comment down if you want to know more about the Navigator 2.0. That's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye.